So we've caught up here with the leader of uh, Team Ninja yeah. and uh, the producer of Ninja Gaiden 3. Yeah. And my first question would be like, what, what's the journey been like with Ninja Gaiden 3 and now that you're sort of closing in on the goal? When we started development, we, we really kind of thought it's, you know, how, can, how we can take another look at uh, our main character, Ryuhabus, and really how, how can we can kind of define him as a character and kind of show what really makes him um, just awesome. Like, uh, because we really love the character of Ryuhabusa. So we kind of look, looked at him and we really wanted to explore this concept of uh, the Japanese dark hero. Uh, we kind of wanted to show him, um, we want to really kind of accentuate his kind of human side and really what he's what he really is like rather than li rather than just a ninja so um we're really looking forward to you know how our how gamers and our fans are really going to look at the character when the game comes out so we really can't wait to get some uh, feedback from everyone regarding our kind of new concept and direction for Ninja Gaiden 3. Um, with, with a series like Ninja Gaiden, I would think as well that it's it's a little bit hard to break free from what you've previously done because there's such a hardcore following that perhaps want the game to be just as it always has been. Uh, is that something that you consider? With Ninja Gaiden 3, we just we didn't really just want to make um, it just a standard, like uh, just a classic action game. We didn't just want to keep kind of going on what we've been doing all this time. We want, we kind of wanted to take another look at the the IP and also the main character as well. Um, obviously, there's a, a, a hardcore following, as you said, and you know we we do take our fans very very ser seriously, and we think they're really important to us. Um, but so we think that you know our new direction plus. You know, the aspects that we kept that our fans will um, still love are in there. So I think, um, you know, when they get their hands on it, I think they'll they'll feel pretty good about the game. And, and I think they'll enjoy the game as they have enjoyed the other Ninja Guidance as well. So we're confident about that. So 2012 seems like, you know, the biggest year for Team Ninja ever yeah. with the... Uh, Ninja Gaiden 3 and, and Ninja Gaiden Sigma 2 is, is coming out on, on PS Vita and then later on we'll get Dead or Alive 5. So uh, it's, it seems like a lot of work has been done over the last few years building up towards yeah. this year. Uh, could you tell us about that experience and what it's been like to work on, on so many projects at the same time? Yeah, 2012 is, uh, is, is the year for us and you know, we've, we've been waiting for some time to actually just get, um, you know, get all these titles up and running and you know, that we've been able to you know, share it with everyone around the world and just we're really excited uh, for this year and um, as you know like Team Ninja, up to, uh, well it's up to now as well, it's always been known for, for our, you know, our ability to create like, content that like, really portrays sex, sex and violence is what we're actually calling it. Um, and with, the, with these like um, games that we're actually releasing right now, Ninja Gaiden 3 and, and Dead or Alive 5, like what we're doing with this concept, we're really kind of revamping and taking an, another look, redefining what sex and violence is to Team Ninja and to our fans and gamers around the world. What we really want to do with, this, uh, with these two concepts is to create and evolve and also make the concept of sex and violence much more mature, more grown up, rather than just like cheap, uh, portrayals of, of what those um, two concepts actually literally are. So we're, we're really confident that we can actually pull it off and we really want like mature and grown-up gamers to actually understand kind of this new direction for Team Ninja and we want to really give another kind of a deep layer to our games and really what this sex and violence themes mean. Maybe the fans have grown up during this time as well so it will be more in line with what the fans would want these days. But um, could you give any, any concrete examples of, of how you're maturing, say, say their Live 5 or Ninja Gaiden 3? Well, first of all, uh, let's talk about violence. In Ninja Gaiden 3, our main, uh, uh, the protagonist, um, Ryuhabusa, he's a man that, that lives on violence. He kills to complete his mission. Uh, what we really wanted to do is, rather than just giving more splatter, more gore and more, you know, blood and guts flying everywhere, we really wanted to kind of define what, what violence is. We wanted to give violence uh, a, a true meaning um, and we came up with this concept of consequence of, of what you get for the violence you actually for the violence you actually do so um, in the, as you can see uh, from a lot of the art that we uh, created in Ninja Gaiden 3 and all the playables and all the stuff that we actually released Habus's right arm is, is, is red with, it's actually cursed that's kind of uh, his it's kind of his retrib retribution it's um, he's repenting for his sins and it's kind of this portrayal of karma 
uh, basically suffering for all the for all the violence that he's actually done for all the people is he's killed. Um, it's these kind of very deep themes that we you know we want mature gamers to think about what violence is to think about okay, if I, if I do this I will get something in return. So it's really like deep and like emotional themes that we're trying to really pursue in Ninja Gaiden 3 this way. We, we want to give violence a definition. We want to give it a reason. Um, if you look at sex, for example, that are alive, girls have always been known for that. So, okay, let me ask you one thing right now. When you look at uh, when you look at this concept of sex, when you go and meet a woman, do you look at a woman's breasts? Do you, do you judge a woman by her breasts? You don't. That's just rude and disgusting. Um, what we really want to do in Dead or Alive, especially because our, our female characters have been such a, a huge symbol of the series, what we want to do is really find that. And what we want to do is, is, is make a woman um, who really kind of moves a man's heart. When a man looks at that woman, when, when, he, when he looks at her posture, when he looks at her um, manners, um, when he hears her voice, it's everything that makes up a beautiful woman that can really kind of emotionally move a man. That is something that we're really trying to put in Dead or Alive 5 and kind of portray our female characters like that. Something that's not superficial, basically, in both Ninja Gaiden 3 and Dead or Alive 5. We're giving, it, we're giving the series a much more um, deep and emotional connection than, than we have up to now, and uh, we really want to give meaning to what we're actually doing right now in Team Ninja, and that's, that's a, a huge kind of uh, movement towards the future right now. So. Um with Ninja Gaiden 3, there's a, a demo for Dead or Alive 5, and that seems very early to put out the demo. So are you, are you interested in hearing the feedback that players will, will have for, for in, with, with the demo? So this is it. Uh, yes, it, it is um, much earlier than you would release a demo, but the reason uh, we released that demo is, um, as you said, is to get feedback from, from gamers. I think the fighting games um, uh, are made uh, with the interaction of, of development and, and the, the, the core kind of fighting game fan. And I, I think, you know, the more feedback we get, the more we can put in the system, we can adjust the system to make the game much better. Um, we're, with this demo that we are putting in um, Ninja Gaiden 3, we're really excited to kind of hear what uh, fans and, f and uh, gamers out there really have to say about kind of the new concept and the new direction. So we were, re we were really eager to actually put the demo in and, and just hear as much um, co comments from fans and, and gamers out there. And we're really excited to see how we can kind of uh, fit that in um, moving forward with development. So um, it's actually been almost five, seven years when, when Dead or Alive 5 comes out um, since, since Dead or Alive 4. Um, how do you feel that the fighting genre has, has evolved in that time? And and uh, where do you think that you could sort of advance it with, with the real life five? Well, first of all, the evolution of fighting games within the seven years that uh, we've been away with Dead or Alive, I think um, the, the biggest evolution was made when Street Fighter 4 came out, I think. Um, that, you know, that, was, that was the father of fighting games, I think, Street Fighter. And I think bringing it back into this generation, kind of redefining the game that way and, and, and making it, you know, look like it looks and giving it online obviously has really um, made a huge impact on the on the fighting game genre and I think it's because because Street Fighter um, redefined or kind of brought back that fighting game boom I think that also is giving us an opportunity to, uh, opportunity to kind of look back at ourselves and make Dead or Alive 5 so we're really grateful for that um, but if you look at like fighting games right now, fighting games you have um, obviously online has been one of the biggest drivers um, to kind of create this massive community and also it's obviously, um, well, this generation's hardware that's made them look really good but even still, like, if you look at fighting games, like 2D fighting games, it's a very static thing. You have a state, like, just a backdrop, 2D backdrop and, you know, like, fighters going, fighting, you know, on, on one line. And three, even 3D fighters, you know, the, the back, you have some backdrops, but they not, don't really do much. They just kind of sit there and maybe move around a bit, and you got your ring out. So it's kind of a very kind of static experience. Um, what we really want to do with Dead or Alive 5 is kind of push, push um, that formula of actually fighting and interaction with, with, with stages and, and to kind of blend, blend those in and create a holistic um, kind of fighting experience. What we want to call this is our concept of fighting entertainment. We don't really want to use this fighting game term anymore because through this fighting entertainment what we really want to do is um, blend the fight and actually just really kind of make it very interactive with the stage and what is going on. 
Um, for example, let's say you keep punch or kick your opponent into a certain part of the stage. Th stage is going to start crumbling apart. Cars are going to fly. Metal girders are going to go everywhere. It's, it's going to be chaos. O something like a climax scene from a Hollywood uh, movie. You can you can kind of imagine it in that way. So we're tr really trying to push that the inter interaction of a fighting game to, to a brand new level, to a new stage, and we r really want to define what fighting games are going to look like in the future. Um, at the same time, obviously, being Dead or Alive, we really kind of want to keep or integrated that hardcore um, game fighting system that you know hardcore gamers can also get into. So we're adding a new, brand new dimension to an already excellent f uh, hardcore fighting game system that, that is really going to define what the genre is going to look like in the future. And we're really confident and excited about the Real Life 5 as well. All right, so we have one final question. Now, the 2012 is the big year for Team Ninja with, with Dead or Alive and Ninja Guiding coming out. Are you sort of wanting to do something original now, or, or how will the future look? Is it going to be more Dead or Alive and Ninja Gaiden, or, or would you want to do something original after? Well, it has taken us quite a while to actually kind of uh, well bring back Ninja Gaiden and the Dead or Alive series you know, to 2012, and we're really happy that we've been able to do that. Obviously, there are very important IPs; they'll stay with us. But you know, obviously, um, I know everyone's really interested to see what Ninja, uh, what uh, Team Ninja is doing, and um, I can tell you we have a few new uh, things in the works. So uh, stay tuned, and uh, we'll we'll announce those uh, to you in uh, in due time. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you. Thank you.